Have you been suffering from weird nightmares? Um, I'm getting this in greater and greater frequency from the body of Christ. And uh, these are not uh, Christians that are messing around with the flesh. These are Christians that are consecrated and sold out to the Lord and doing the Lord's work and things. Um, a lot of us are suffering from nightmares, and I'm including myself in this list here. We're going to talk a little bit about this. But let's read Psalm 3. just read this this morning, and uh, I thought, well, boy, it really uh, lines up with what we're going through right now as Christians. Really an amazing thing. Uh, it's interesting because Psalm 2, you have the heathen raging and, and taking counsel to, to come together against the Lord and against uh, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed. All right, uh, that's happening. Um, the Antichrist system is growing. The devil's people are joining against the body of Christ. So you have that, but then what do you have in Psalm 3? Some encouragement here. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? <laughs> Many are they that rise up against me. Can you say amen to that as a Christian today? Absolutely. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. Yeah, and it, you know, the, I was going to say the Antichrist. Well, you know, the atheists uh, are coming out all the time. There is no God. You're delusional. You're this. You're that. That's the you know thing that irritates these atheists because they they come out with this stuff thinking it's an original thought, and it's like actually it's been written for thousands of years in the Bible. You know that it's written by our Bronze Age you know shepherd goat herders and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that's a shame, isn't it? This book knows all about you and tells it in ways that you don't like it to come out. Very interesting. Verse 4. No, sorry. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill, Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awaked, for the Lord sustained me. You'll get through these times. Let me tell you. I'm going to talk more about this, you know, as we continue here, but um, you're going to have nights where you might go a couple nights of just nightmare after nightmare after nightmare, uh, maybe a couple throughout the night. Um, if you get up to go to the bathroom or whatever else, or you wake up, you go back to sleep, you might have a few a night. I know that happens to me quite frequently, but uh, you'll get through it and the Lord will give you some good rest. Again, I'm going to talk more about that as we continue. Um, verse 6, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. We're just about done here in the church age. So don't worry about all the uh, tens of thousands of people out there that hate Bible-believing Christians. Don't be afraid of them. Verse 7, O rise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. You know, it's kind of funny. It's just like, you know, when you speak the Word of God in your ministry, in your life, videos that you make, whatever else, it's just like a slap in the face of the lost world. You know, reminding them that they're lost and their self-righteousness is not going to save them. Just wham! The Lord will do that through your ministry as a Christian. Verse 8, Salvation belongeth unto the Lord, thy blessing is upon thy people. Selah. And of course, it's Old Testament. I realize talking to the Jews there. But the point is, today, we're actually the body of Christ. A distinction that they didn't even have back then in the Old Testament. Uh, it's an amazing thing there. So, salvation is something that the Lord gives to those that ask for it, those that call upon Him. Come to Him in a spirit of you know faith and believe that Jesus died, was buried and rose again, and that His blood is there to cover their sins, to wash them away, actually, I should say. Um, thy blessing is upon thy people. Yeah, God's blessing is upon you as a Christian. But right now, this satanic system of the Antichrist is getting more and more powerful and more and more prevalent, and it's literally getting to a point where it's just getting so vexing as a Christian today. Um, you know, from what I've been hearing, just as a way to encourage you out there if you're having these nightmares, from what I've been hearing, um, a lot of the nightmares, and we're not going to get into psychology stuff here and, and what do nightmares mean and things like this, what does this mean and, and all this stuff, 
uh, half the time they don't know anyhow, they're just guessing. But a lot of what I'm hearing is Christians are having nightmares of being trapped someplace. Um, being trapped in a building, being trapped in a room, being trapped, whatever, and you can't find a way out of the thing. And, you know, I do think that that is, uh, again, nightmares, I think, are both two things, subconscious and also spiritual realm. Um, there's stuff that you're going in your mind and you're going like, I'm trapped, I can't get out of this. You know, there's nothing that you can do to really escape the evil of this world living in this world. All right, there's, it's, you know, kind of a crazy thing. I mean, you can go out into the middle of nowhere and you're still, you know, getting bombarded by pollution and all kinds of other stuff. So there's that feeling there of being trapped and wanting to escape. And of course, that's going to be the rapture when that happens. Um, another thing that I've heard of is, is very prevalent with nightmares that Christians have been having is the thing of devils actually like, monstrous types of evil creatures in your dreams that are are threatening to kill you and things like that. I've heard that quite a bit. Again, from my own experience, I've, I've had dreams like that. Um, just horrible, horrible, bloody, vicious, violent types of dreams and you wake up in a cold sweat and, and just very much disturbed. Um, another one which is extremely prevalent um, for a lot of Christians I've talked to is uh, extremely sexually perverted dreams. Stuff that you would never even think about doing while awake and, and whatever. And this stuff is just coming into your mind and you're just going like, you wake up and you're like, Lord, I'm sorry. I wasn't you know, thinking that. I'm, I'm sorry. And again, the reason I'm telling you this is because a lot of you write to me and you're saying, what is going on, Brother Brian? I don't, I don't understand. I mean, why am I having these dreams? I can't even sleep. You know, you go through a whole night of this and you wake up in the morning and you're like, well, I slept for like eight hours, six or eight hours or something, but I don't feel like I even went to sleep. I just, I'm, I'm restless. It's starting to get to my health. I'm, I'm just, my nerves are shot. My nerves are frazzled. Um, yeah. Uh, you look at how Jesus was before he died on the cross. Um, he was very greatly troubled and, and his spirit was moved and, and very much vexed. Well, our Savior is letting us experience a little bit of that evil feeling from the world out there. And we're getting closer to the rapture. I don't know. Never going to set a date. Never going to say, well, you know, it's happened or whatever else. Uh, or it's, it's, you know, when I say it's happened, <laughs> what, I, what I should say is I don't, I don't think the Lord's ever going to show me, you know, come to me and say it's going to be tomorrow night at 9 o'clock or something like that. I don't see any really, you know, real scripture support for that. But as we get closer, the devil's power is growing. And it's not that, oh, the devil's taken over and the Lord's up there going, oh, no, what am I going to do? No. The Lord is allowing this thing to happen so that his judgment and fury can come upon the lost world that has spent years and years and years rejecting him. Again, no innocent people ever go to hell, number one. No innocent person is going, going to go into the time of Jacob's trouble. All right, I firmly believe that. And I believe part of that is children are going to be leaving under the age of accountability. All right. So it's going to be, you know, children of saved or lost people, you know, are going to be going. You know, I believe that. Uh, again, that's a debate that can go back and forth. I'm not going to part company if somebody disagrees with me and says, no, I think children are going to go into the time. Whatever. It's a theory. But my point is, Please be encouraged. Please do not um, get to the point where you're just questioning yourself saying, I can't be saved because I'm having these horrible dreams and I'm just like waking up going like, oh, you know. Um, I'll just tell you, the other day I had this spiritual attack that hit me and it was it was horrifying. I mean, it was it was really, really, really bad. And I mean, it was literally to the point where I was just like, all I have to do is just survive this thing. I'm like, I'm not even going to try to make videos or work on a sermon or get much of anything done. I am just going to concentrate on surviving, reading the Bible, quoting scripture, turn my hymns up, you know, nice and loud and things like that. You know, I mean, just, just focus on the things of the Lord and just like this horrible feeling of dread and, and horror was just upon me. And it was the day I was supposed to be having settlement, 
um, for our property that we I think we've sold <laughs> you know and um, I mean it's just it was it was wild I mean and I'm I've felt this and I mean I'm, I'm hearing from Christians young Christians older that have been saved for years and years and years strong Bible believing Christians and they're saying brother Brian I can't sleep at night I'm having these weird nightmares I'm trapped there's perversion stuff there's violent bloody horrible just nightmares um, yeah you're not alone and uh, how do you fight it well um, there's different ideas out there again I've talked about this in other studies you can play the King James Bible like an audio recording play it kind of, of low and, and softly um, you know some of this stuff is just going to happen and you know your reaction to it is either going to be that you're going to get discouraged and try to go to the world for comfort or you're just going to run into the arms of the Lord and just say God please protect me from this and I'll tell you usually it only lasts for a couple days and then at the worst and then it's done and uh, it's it's there's some real suffering out there and again, you know, I get I get really concerned when I see people that uh, claim to be in ministry, and they don't ever talk about stuff like this. They don't ever say anything at all about going through these these hardships and things. I mean, I'm hearing from I've heard from so many of you out there, telling me, you know, what on earth, you know, what's going on, what's what's wrong, and things. And you know, because you know, you think as a Christian, you're thinking, am I being chastened here? Did I do something wrong, Lord? Is it is that why I don't have peace? Is that why this stuff is happening? And this, you know, but I don't know, you know. <laughs> It's happening to all of us, all right? Um, please stand strong in this. And if you're some stupid little witch or something out there that's like, we're putting curses and spells on, on Christians, you're rather stupid, okay? I mean, you're an idiot. I'm trying to be nice here. Um, when you do this thing and the Christians leave, you know, and you're attacking us and stuff like that, and the Christians leave, it's going to be the most bloody, violent, slaughtering time, and you're not going to survive, Right? You think God's going to take it easy on you if you're attacking Christians. You're uh, quite foolish. So um, that's going to be it. I just wanted to do this thing just to let some of you know because I'm have getting i getting a lot of letters, emails, things like this. A lot of you that are saying, what is going on here? I don't know what's going on. And, and you're thinking it's just happening to you. It's not. It's happening to all of us in the body of Christ. Please be encouraged. Read Psalm 3. That might even be another option. You know, uh, read Psalm 3 before you go to bed. Read it aloud. If you wake up in the middle of the night and you've had these horrible dreams, Psalm 3. Read it. This is your spiritual weapon, brethren. And, you know, for a long time we've been just kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, the, the Bible, it's our weapon, you know, and, and we can just kind of fight things and whatever. Um, I think as time goes by, it's going to become extremely important to use this thing as an offensive weapon and just simply, you know, make sure that you're quoting this book. Carry this thing with you all the time. And when you start feeling these attacks, just get this thing open, start making, start underlining passages, making, marking down places where you can fight the spiritual realm with your King James Bible. That would be my suggestion. Thank you for watching.